Hi, I'm Paul Mason, and I'm going to be speaking a bit about properties of stars. And to begin with, brightness, because brightness is the thing that we most easily observe about stars. How bright a star appears in the sky at night is called the apparent brightness. And we could also think of a system that uh, involves the brightness comparing one star to another star and so on. And the uh, astronomer Hipparchus did that and he called it the apparent magnitude, which is the brightness that we see a star uh, appearing in the sky as seen from Earth. And Hipparchus said the brightest stars would be called first magnitude and then the second group of stars would be second magnitude, then the other group of sort of ordinary bright stars would be third magnitude, and then maybe down to fourth and fifth magnitude to include all of the stars in the sky in his catalog of about 1,000 stars. The uh, absolute magnitude is significantly different. It's important because the apparent magnitude is the brightness that we see of the star as seen from Earth, but the absolute magnitude is something we're more interested in, and that is what is the true brightness, the true magnitude. If all of the stars were, say, the same distance from us, say, about 10 parsecs away, then what would be the magnitude of those stars? So if the star is further than 10 parsecs away, we would imagine in a thought experiment moving it closer and until it was 10 parsecs away. And if it was closer, like the sun is much closer than, than 10 parsecs, we would move it further away and uh, be able to compare stars that way. The most important term and concept to uh, understand here is luminosity. And luminosity is an energy per second. It's the total amount of energy radiated from a star each second. Two stars with the same absolute magnitude have the same luminosity. And the luminosity is the physical, most physically related to the star as it's the total amount of energy leaving that star every second. So uh, that's the most important description of the true brightness of the star. But remember, apparent magnitude is different. Apparent magnitude is just simply the magnitude, how bright the star appears in the sky with respect to the other stars uh, at night. Now, if we want to think about what happens when light travels away from a source, we can look at a diagram like this. If we see a source of light traveling away in all directions in three-dimensional space, we need to consider the idea that as the light travels, it travels along a surface of a sphere. And the uh, surface of a sphere is a, as any surface goes as the square of the area, in this case the diameter of the sphere. So the intensity of the star is the intensity at the source divided by 4 pi times the distance squared. And a good way to visualize this is to imagine a sphere surrounding the source located a distant r here and light rays coming from the source they go through this sphere think of it as a window as uh, in this sphere of radius r another sphere is set up twice as far away from the source the sphere is uh, is four, has four times as much surface area 
So the light rays that went through that one unit of area on the first sphere end up going through four units here. And this is because the surface area of the sphere that has twice the radius has two squared or four times the amount of area. If we go further and consider a sphere at three times the original sphere, think of blowing up a balloon. You blow up the balloon, radius r, and then 2r, and then 3r. The light rays coming through here, the first window would have to go through four windows here. By the time it gets out here, there are nine windows. So the same amount of light going through one box uh, of area here is divided by nine. It's separated out and spread out so that it's only one ninth as bright. So the square of the distance is how the brightness changes as the as a function of the distance from the source. So we look at the term inverse square law of light. Inverse meaning we have less light, lower brightness as we go further out. The square, because it's the distance square, squared uh, that determines how that brightness falls off. So if we consider an example, if we have two stars with the same absolute magnitude or luminosity, then we know that the two stars have the same true brightness. So we're going to simplify the problem by th thinking about two stars that are intrinsically the same kind of star. And the only difference is they're at different distances. Suppose that you have the following information. Star A is two parsecs from Earth. And if you don't know what a parsec is, just think of it as, as some distance between stars. So star A is two parsecs from the Sun and Earth. Star B appears nine times fainter than star A. We don't know how far star B is, but it's nine times fainter than star A. So we could see that this corresponds to star A being about the distance R here, which in, in this case is two parsecs. And star B is further because it's nine times fainter. It must be how many times farther? First, how many times farther? Star B is three times farther than star A because the square root of nine is three and we see that we have that relationship here. So star B is three times farther than star A. Me, that means it must be three nine times fainter. So three times farther, how far is it in parsecs? Three times farther. So three times two parsecs or six parsecs away from Earth. Okay? So using this and the fact that a key piece of information here was that both of the stars have the same luminosity. In this case, we can use the inverse square law whenever we have objects that have the same luminosity. Their true brightness is the same, so only the distance determines their, their brightness as we see it. And that depends on the square of the distance from us to the object. 